So thank you everyone for being here with us um, tonight. Um, we are so happy to um, continue our Architecture Month uh, 2021. As you all know, this year's theme is um, Living Borders. It's a dialogue between uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Palestine. So each week we are having um, speakers addressing um, the, the theme from the Bosnian perspective on Tuesdays, and then from the Palestinian perspective on Thursdays. Um, we opened up the program last week, and the first subtopic was transforming borders. So we were talking with Haris Piplash and Nadia um, as well, Nadia Habash last, um, last week, and they were kind of giving us a sociopolitical context, um, uh, Haris for Sarajevo and Nadia for Palestine, as a whole. So we were discussing these kind of shifting borders and then kind of uh, living within the transformative borders. Um, this week, we are continuing with two guests and um, the sub, let's say, theme or topic is invisible or visible borders. And we're talking about kind of um, uh, divisions within cities. So the first um, speaker, um, again, speaking from the uh, Bosnian perspective, uh, will be our guest um, who is for the first time with us uh, this year. And so we're very happy to welcome Sinada Demirovic Habibia. And um, the second speaker uh, on Thursday is going to be um, Anwar Jaber. So she will be joining us on Thursday. So Sinada will be talking about Mostar and Anwar is going to be talking about Ramallah. And so we'll be maybe drawing some uh, parallels. Um, uh, and we are also going to be talking about um, these two cities in their socio political um, context. And so before I get started, I just want to acknowledge Claudia Zini, who's here with us. She's the director of Kuma International. And so she is um, obviously co-organizing the program uh, with me. And we also just want to remind you that the program runs until the end of October. So please join us again on every Tuesday and Thursday um, at the same time. And so now having done these introductions, um, I just wanted to say a few things about um, Sinada Demirovic Habibia. So Sinada studied architecture in Morocco, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Denmark, and she's employed in the city administration of the city of Mostar as an expert advisor for urban planning. And from 2000, and 2000 to 2003, she worked as an architect in the Mostar's Aga Khan Trust for Culture and the World Monument Fund Office on the reconstruction of the cultural heritage of Mostar and Herzegovina region. Um, so also in the period from 2012 to 2018, she was a curator at the Center for Architecture, Dialogue and Art, um, ADA Mostar. And in 2019, she founded an association called Urban House. Um, is it IDEA or IDEA? Or I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. So maybe Sinada can tell us. Um, but it's a laboratory that explores uh, the important relationship between design, emotional state, and spatial, socio, uh, spatial so uh, social needs of the society. Uh, she's also a lecturer at the Jamal Bielic University in Mostar in the study program of interior um, design. And so perhaps the two most significant projects um, which, in which Snada has participated uh, and which are kind of historically significant for the post-war Mostar are the inscription of Mostar on the UNESCO World Heritage List in 2005. And more recently, she was also working um, on the candidacy of the city of Mostar for the European Capital of Culture 2020, uh, 2024. Um, and this was uh, work done in, in uh, 2019. So as you can see, um, she's ve very well, versed and I think a, a perfect person to speak to us about the city of Mostar and she's going to be speaking about um, the divisions uh, or a divided city, a case of, of Mostar tonight. So uh, it's, a, it's a real pleasure um, to introduce or to give floor to Sanada. Sanada, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Um, I will also just before we start, if I can ask um, the audience, maybe in the chat, just to type your name and where you're from so we can have a little bit of like a, of a background on you that would be great just for our own records and then also um, if you have questions you can type them in the chat or later on you can ask them in person but if you're a bit shy you don't want to turn your camera on feel free to type them in the chat and then we will uh, we will have a chance to discuss 
uh, a little bit later after Sunada's talk. So Sunada, thank you so much for being here with us. Um, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Leila. Thanks uh, to Claudia and Puma International for inviting me for this program. It's a real pleasure uh, for me. And I gladly accept it because uh, I think that uh, the work you are doing uh, is very important uh, and uh, it is very important to talk about this, what we are actually sharing among us. It's uh, experiences, it's our lives, uh, but uh, penetrated actually uh, through our professional uh, profession and professional experience. As you just uh, said a few words about my work uh, and I uh, was just resuming uh, for how long in a post-war most I'm actually being active. Since my student days until today, I can say that I know almost that if it's possible to to say that I know every stage of post-war most art, because I was following it quite uh, through the different uh, uh, ways so like uh, whether uh, as uh, being uh, in a city administration on one hand but also as uh, working in the NGO sector for quite a long and and I'm going to talk about that tonight I think that um, today generally we are quite exposed uh, to media uh, and we can uh, find many uh, information on Google or any other uh, platform. But I think that still what uh, one person can share and the experiences that we are actually sharing is something that is uh, probably something that you cannot find on the platform. And my story is also quite um, related uh, to what had happened during the war, after the war, and how actually I came to the point uh, uh, to dedicate my profession, uh, being an architect, but being an architect who is uh, engaged in community. So I will open my uh, screen now with the presentation. Uh, hopefully I will be not necessarily short, but uh, uh, concise. Uh, I hope we see it. Um, Mm -hmm. So invisible borders, uh, as uh, the, the team is uh, saying, is exactly what can very shortly describe the situation in the city of Mostar of today. It was never divided, uh, except of during the war, really literally like uh, with any war or something like that, uh, but uh, definitely still in the city of Mostar, the mental borders exist. And for how long, uh, it is a quite big question. But before we are coming down to these uh, details, I think uh, I, would, I would start uh, from just a few information, especially for, for the guests, uh, tonight guests so who are not really uh, familiar with the city of Mostar, in particular with Bosnia and Herzegovina. The city of Mostar uh, is uh, in the south uh, of Bosnia and Herzegovina with uh, 12, uh, 27 kilom square kilometers, uh, and it's a fifth si by size, a city in, uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And since 2004, it's established as a uh, united municipal uh, government, because uh, from the end of war in 1995 until, uh, uh, until uh, 2004, it was uh, divided into six municipalities and the district area of a city, like the core of a city that was basically the division line during the war. Speaking about the history of a city, there are many layers that uh, we find in the city of Mostar and around the city of Mostar. Uh, very deep history, very rich and very diverse. Unfortunately, in the recent past, uh, Mostar didn't recognize this as uh, advantage, but as a disadvantage. And definitely the brutality of war somehow put this uh, diversity and the richness of diversity in the second plan. Uh, in uh, 1878, when the Austro-Hungarian monarchy came to Bosnia and Herzegovina, this is the plan from then of city of Mostar showing uh, how city, uh, the way the city existed during the 
Ottoman Empire. It was dominantly developed uh, uh, next to River Neretva, and then one part of it also next to River Radobolja. So it's a major two rivers that cross the city of Mostar, and the whole life, I would say, started, urban life started actually around the two rivers. Again, uh, this diversity that uh, continued during the Austro-Hungarian and then during the socialism and then the war. So this is the image of a city of Mostar uh, around uh, the old bridge in 1994. Uh, the image is, uh, I would say, very traumatic for me uh, to see it 20 and more, almost 30 years after. This is Mostar in that time. And uh, uh, sorry for actually very uh, emotional, this part of the presentation, because I cannot really stop myself uh, seeing what we actually had almost 30 years ago and what we went through uh, without the bridge, without the housing, without anything. And uh, this is the boulevard, the, the front line between the, what we call today, not maybe myself, I never call it East or West, but uh, dominantly you can see, uh, you can hear a narrative of today uh, that people, um, when they want to explain uh, where is uh, some uh, building or uh, where they want to go, they dominantly say it's on the East or West side. So exactly these two tents that you can see on the left side of the image are presenting uh, uh, the, the border that existed in 1994 after the war stopped. Uh, the people who wanted to cross from one to another side actually had to go through the checkpoint in order to, to be able to cross and to visit their families. So this is a part of a boulevard that I'm talking about, which was a war line, the front line. Uh, this is today, of course, completely, re almost completely reconstructed, uh, and uh, there are no real remnants uh, of uh, these uh, uh, war scars. But I very often show this image that these two people somehow, in kind of a metaphor or in, as a symbol, are showing that even after as such a destruction, the life goes on. And, uh, and the life really literally continued very slowly under a big pressure, under a great trauma, but yet it did continue. However, city of Mostar, as we could see, was lived on the river and still lives at the river. And uh, River Neretva actually adorns, but also divides the uh, city of Mostar. But as I just uh, presented uh, 25 and more years ago, the city of Mostar was divided in East and West as a result of a war, but also as a result of non-tolerance between the two dominant national and ethnical groups that still live in this city. In the one chapter of a book of divided city uh, made by Esther Charlesworth and uh, John Callan, this is a quite interesting uh, uh, phrase uh, explaining uh, Boulevard and uh, the front line. The first, it was a physical war division line, a front line, and now it is not a border, it's a physical, in a physical sense, but it's a border in psychological sense. So this, is, uh, this was written long ago, but it still exists. So the mental division really exists still. I could say, if we would do a question right now on one or another side of the city, we would recognize that many people still feel this boulevard as the beginning or as the end, whatever you like, of the city, actually of the part of the city where they live and the part of the city they use. Of course, this is not the case of each citizen of a city. So many people regularly across and walks and works around, but yet in somehow uh, there is still this kind of um, a mental division. Most probably it is also uh, heaten by the polit political situation that is uh, every four year uh, before the elections is 
somehow getting hotter and hotter, but also taking in consideration that Mostar was recognized as a city of frozen democracy because we didn't have elections for more than a decade. Even that definitely helped the whole process to be somehow on standby. So the first moment of uh, trying uh, to develop this idea of unifying the city actually started after the Roman peace agreement 1994, when the district area was formed. This is the, the small red uh, point. And uh, six municipalities uh, with the three dominant Bosnian and other three dominant Krat uh, municipalities. So this district area is supposed to be the point of unification, reunification, administratively speaking, but also for all other segments of our everyday life. I don't know what to say today after so many years, because this is the idea that started in 1995. As I mentioned at the beginning, in 2004, it was already unified administratively as a one unit. But if you have a parallel education, a parallel culture institution, parallel, parallel health, care institutions, it's a quite questionable whether uh, the idea of unification and taking a city as a one really uh, succeeded in that sense. So this is most out of today, but the district and the floor line is more or less here. So what, what we just saw on, on, on another image. That line actually destroyed the city, not only a line, but the war. But this is what the war actually brought behind, what, what happened after. Destroyed connection between people, broke, brought to us broken families, uh, made this, as I said, parallel systems. These six administration, uh, Organizations by different regulations, uneven development. This is all what really had happened afterwards. Some of the things did change, but still, for instance, these broken families is uh, quite uh, important to be mentioned because the Mostar in ex Yugoslavia was uh, really famous by the numbers of mixed marriages, and the, the war really did. Uh, and broke many of them because of what the trauma of war actually brings uh, to all of us or to all of those who can understand what I'm saying, who lived maybe similar situations. And uh, unfortunately, I have to say, unfortunately, I myself, I was 16 when the war started, almost 17. And um, in uh, 1993, um, since I, I still live in uh, what we call today West uh, Mostar, I'm a Bosnian Muslim, but in that time we were all captured uh, in uh, prisons and concentration camps for, for what we are. Uh, although just uh, maybe a year or two years uh, before everything was so super uh, serene, but then a war actually brought us to that point that people start hating I would say each other's although this what happened to me never actually uh, awake any hate in myself at contrary knowing what does it mean to be under this kind of a pressure without the freedom you know uh, expelled then refused uh, actually in 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 my personal case uh, uh, awake totally different uh, emotions like uh, trying uh, to educate and to work with the younger generation in order to stop that this process is uh, happen ever again, at least here. So uh, as, I, uh, as I just mentioned, that this divided the uh, line and then again uh, to, to show that the city of Mostar, even being so brutally destroyed, 10 years after, uh, or a bit more than 10 years after, was quite reconstructed. The, the historical area was reconstructed. And in 2005, Mostar got inscribed as the World Heritage Monument. 
And the criteria by which city of Mostar or the old bridge, an area of the old bridge was inscribed is underlying, underlying uh, the fact of living traditions. So this living tradition, this is an essence of what we should uh, care about and what we cherish, should cherish and uh, somehow uh, build the, the future of our city and our communities on that, being proud of living in such a diverse uh, society instead of what actually did happen to us in the early 90s. And this is just uh, some briefly uh, crossing the old uh, city, the reconstructed old bridge, uh, etc. So we put a lot of effort in this process. This process, they start like uh, uh, as in already in 1996 and 97 with the first rehabilitation plan. And then uh, with the plans uh, from 1999, uh, uh, setting up uh, the office, uh, uh, units for coordination of the works on the old bridge uh, until 2004 when the bridge and the neighborhood of the bridge was completely reconstructed. Uh, sorry, just to mention that this is actually probably the first bigger step toward the reconciliation that was assumed as such that the reconstruction of uh, um, this important monument, the old bridge, by which city of Mostar got the name, or by the bridge keepers, Mostar, that it will actually bring people together and that it will work in that sense. To be honest, many comments show that, uh, at contrary, it didn't really provoke uh, uh, this uh, feeling. So we can say that we did succeed in reconstruction and physical reconstruction and bringing back the identity, at least a part of the identity of a city. But this what was actually the, the idea behind reconciling uh, uh, the, the ethnical groups, etc. didn't actually work in, uh, in full uh, um, or in proper way as it was imagined. So 20, almost 20 years after, we are coming uh, with another uh, project, uh, culture as a tool for uh, bridging diversities, uh, named uh, uh, under the title of Everything is Bridgeable. This was uh, the most high candidacy for European Capital of Culture in 2024. Uh, we did uh, came to the final, uh, but uh, unfortunately we were not selected uh, to become a European capital of culture. And uh, one of a very important, crucially important uh, reasons why it didn't happen is exactly that uh, most art in that time was still without the city council and it was uh, recognized as a city of frozen democracy. And certain they couldn't show really, you know, like, um, couldn't uh, co confirm that uh, probably the, the very good projects under the name Everything is Bridging will, uh, will be realized. And uh, that was definitely one of the major reasons why we didn't uh, succeed. For, at, the, at the end, uh, fortunately, we have a council, city council and a new mayor uh, from this year. Uh, and uh, we are hoping uh, for more democracy in the city of Mostar. Uh, although it's another pair of shoes and I, I won't talk about that uh, because uh, it is uh, quite uh, also questionable did really anything had changed because uh, uh, behind uh, all this who is uh, in the structure is still the same uh, uh, national parties etc etc I mean uh, some somehow an issue and a global issue of a whole Bosnia and Herzegovina but somehow it's always so visible in Mostar it is more visible in Mostar than any any other city of Bosnia and Herzegovina but uh, this um, uh, project uh, and this what I'm in a in a following uh, minutes what I'm going to talk about um, is exactly like a bridge to new tomorrow. Uh, with, the, with the candidacy of Mostar for the European Capital of Culture, we actually wanted to open a new door, a new possibility uh, for city of Mostar. It didn't work, okay. But um, metaphorically speaking, this uh, 
bridge to new tomorrow, what it actually is and what it can be. It's definitely uh, a new generation of people and uh, the way how we actually educate them that they should understand uh, in particular city of Mostar. And, uh, and I think uh, that uh, this, uh, what we are trying to do with the urban house there is uh, one of the steps uh, toward uh, that uh, new tomorrow. But before we started uh, with the um, uh, idea, I was curating uh, other center, Center for Architecture, Dialogue and Art in uh, 2012, the, together with the agency of, for local, uh, agency of Local Democracy in Mostar and the uh, Foundation for Contemporary Art and Architecture Far Fabriken from uh, Sweden. So we started in 2012 uh, with the project called New Urban Typologies. Uh, it is a larger program uh, that uh, Far Fabriken uh, developed uh, in uh, several countries uh, and in the Bosnia and Herzegovina, it was um, uh, the program particularly uh, related to city uh, of Mostar, no, no other cities. What was uh, the intention of our first uh, new urban uh, typologies? Uh, we actually worked uh, on the district area and uh, somehow we wanted to set up the guidelines uh, for the master plan uh, for this area. Because uh, so many years after the war, like more than 20, almost 30, this uh, area, district area never got a master plan. And uh, the new urban typologies uh, was uh, developed the way that uh, through different uh, identification and uh, questionnaires and uh, analysis, we made uh, one uh, document that uh, we wanted to, to deliver to the city council. What actually happened is uh, that uh, unfortunately, there was no city council exactly from 2012. And we didn't succeed with the, this intention. But uh, what we did, uh, we did put the pillars for the projects that were coming after. So the first uh, project after this was the New Urban Typologies in 2013, where together with the mayor and the president of city council uh, and uh, people uh, from university and NGO sector, we start talking about the future, trying to set up the center for architecture and art. Finally, uh, we, uh, we started the process of setting up that center that later on get, got the name Architecture, Dialogue and Art. We started with the, with the exhibition uh, patchwork of narratives, uh, but the part that was uh, done in Mostar was uh, named Patchwork Mostar. So in order to develop this uh, exhibition, uh, we asked the mayor in that time uh, to give us an opportunity to get in uh, the music school at Musala Square that was brutally destroyed and burned in during the war. And then in a post-war uh, process, it was reconstructed only from uh, the outer part, the facade, but inside it was completely uh, raw-bound. So in order to make this uh, exhibition happen, we applied uh, for only one space at the, at the ground floor of the music school. Why this music school at Mosala is so important? Maybe it's one of the great represents uh, how everything is divided, but even the music. So this is a, a, a music school that was built, first of all, from the Austro-Hungarian period. At the beginning, it was again a uh, uh, high school, but not for music, but for trade. But uh, the, from, from the beginning of the 20th century, it was already a music school. Many generations uh, pass through the school. Every time you cross the Musala before the war, you would hear the voices uh, and uh, the instruments. 
into somehow it's a kind of again Yuslotsi related to this Musala. So every time you think about it, the first point you actually uh, know it Muzička school or music school. So uh, we thought that maybe with this exhibition, the Patchwork Mostar, that was related to the stories and narratives uh, from the past uh, and the present, but also potential uh, stories and ideas for the future, that we can open up the door of the music school and let people in to get and to be part of it. And uh, after one month of working on this exhibition, we set up the first con concert uh, of the two music school playing together like 22 years after. So this was this uh, room. It used to be a ballet room uh, uh, before and um, it, it has a quite a big surface. So at the floor of the of this room, we put the map of the city of Mostar and then behind it's the patchwork wall that was built actually through the different workshops that we organized during uh, the, the exhibition itself. So it was kind of an interactive exhibition. Every time the workshop is finished, we produce the materials and then we put them on the wall. So finally, at the end, after many workshops, uh, we got that uh, wall finished. The second project also important that was developed within this uh, school was uh, building blocks most are very where uh, the children uh, together with their uh, parents and the architects of city of Mostar were developing the different concepts um, of uh, how to engage uh, the open space, uh, what kind of construction, for instance, are needed uh, uh, and what, what children of a city of Mostar actually think about. So they worked uh, on, on this uh, process and they worked with the architects and some how architect, the children were the clients to the architects and it was a quite interactive process. Finally, we did get out of it uh, this one, um, how to say, rather performative pavilion. The intention was that later after this exhibition, we will be able to put this construction out somewhere, but unfortunately there was no enough of a financial, uh, uh, what you call, uh, finances sorry, uh, uh, to, to, to make it happen. But uh, nevertheless, we continued the works uh, with a bit older generation, also mapping and thinking about the city, because we understood that uh, the younger generation, the youth uh, uh, and the children do not really percept the space, do not really know the spaces around them. And uh, we thought that if we would engage these people into something which is so natural and so uh, neutral uh, in a way, that there is no political story behind and no ethnical story behind, but it's something that actually uh, is uh, part of our everyday lives. That's exactly the way how we can uh, raise in a certain way the differences uh, and this brutal division that the, the, the children and the youth of most are uh, going through, taking in consideration that uh, they have uh, divided the school programs and not really often have a chance to meet someone else and uh, to have some neutral and free space where they can be productive and creative. Uh, so basically during other center, we had this uh, patchwork of narratives, Mostar Lab, uh, Urban Synapse, Building Blocks Mostar, as maybe four major uh, projects that were developed uh, uh, during a few years. And then uh, uh, it was already time uh, to set up a, a bit uh, more formal uh, structure. And that is exactly where we um, continued uh, with the uh, registered the NGO called IDEA. IDEA actually stands uh, for uh, Innovation, Design, Education, Architecture, and Art. We are kind of five people in this IDEA, uh, like a mix of, I would say, experience and youth, Crea creativity, the mix of um, architects, product designers, web designers, and um, all of us are having some other, I would say, job uh, in, uh, 
that we live off. And uh, this is, an, I, I cannot say it's a hobby. It is something that we really love and we are very dedicated to. And we are trying to make uh, a better space and a place for uh, younger people, uh, exactly uh, uh, based on our experiences, but also listening uh, their needs uh, and their stories. So one of the pro at, at the website of IDEA, there are, uh, since we are quite young, there are not that much of the projects, but still the projects are there and whoever would like to see can actually go to the website. But uh, I'm going to continue with the project that we are very active in and we are probably uh, most of our activities activism, if I can call it that way, although it's not probably a proper word, is uh, related uh, to a partisan playground, which is this uh, big sport uh, area uh, at, the, at the right side, the neglected space, a hidden pocket uh, that was uh, brutally destroyed during the war and uh, standing behind the big edifice of Djevojačka school, a girls' high school that is still in ruin. And somehow, uh, uh, it's not really visible, but in a history, this place was really one of the genius lotis of a city of Mostar. Unfortunately, the first time we came there, it looked like that, totally, almost like uh, a dam. Uh, and um, uh, we we had firstly uh, to to clean it. So the first uh, uh, cleaning process started through one uh, uh, pro through one. Um, uh, program called the Rustic Pathways. Rustic Pathways is actually an international program that uh, includes the children of, uh, of the age of 13 to 15 coming from around the world. Uh, and uh, uh, the program in Bosnia and Herzegovina, in, in particular in, uh, in Mostar, was related to their uh, engagement into a community in a way that they should do something good for the community. So we were asked what the rustic pathways can do for partisan. And we said, let help us cleaning. So there was like at least five to six groups of children and all, almost 150 of them coming in 2018 and 19, uh, helping to clean uh, this space. And uh, like after cleaning, uh, uh, there was uh, a whole process of, you know, like uh, beautifying it uh, uh, through the street art festival. This is a regular activity for the last 10 years uh, through the street art festival platform. And uh, one of the points uh, in the last three years uh, for street arts uh, was a partisan uh, uh, playground, uh, always uh, full of uh, children, uh, very uh, joyful and uh, uh, active. Uh, because we think uh, that exactly being active in a community the way they are on these uh, photos is uh, what can, how to say, awake uh, in them the importance of the place and uh, probably some kind of sensitivity toward the space and uh, probably open a totally another vision from maybe what they can see or feel in their regular programs, in particular the educational programs that unfortunately are not really giving them the opportunity as uh, this, those programs does. Finally, this is uh, what was the product uh, of uh, their common work. And then uh, it uh, continued uh, further on the year after with uh, new artistic uh, projects, uh, music therapies, uh, and of course, sport different kind of sport uh, and uh, what we did uh, after uh, was also getting uh, um, in contact uh, with the civil engineering faculty in, a, in a, at the University Jamal Bjedic uh, where uh, some of the students uh, did the survey and then gave uh, some uh, ideas uh, on uh, how this uh, space uh, can be reconstructed with uh, 
not a lot of the uh, how to say uh, changes like uh, if possible uh, the full reconstruction and bringing it back to the uh, stage as it was uh, before the war one of our recent projects uh, that we also developed uh, partially at the partisan uh, but also on mapping the other parts of the city that are also very important that are used in everyday life was uh, through the program Open City in Mostar and uh, Think Green uh, uh, workshop that uh, was led by IDEA, uh, mapping the city, walking the city and understanding the city. Because uh, this experience, when you are walking, for instance, from your home to school, and when you are walking through the guided uh, the tour, like we did with the IDEA, was uh, quite different uh, because uh, children were asked to think, uh, to observe, and then to go home to come back tomorrow and uh, to talk about this so eventually what we also tried uh, to integrate but again neutrally uh, both sides of uh, both river banks uh, everyone i mean ethnically speaking uh, children from uh, the, the territory of a whole city of mostak and uh, Yes, uh, this really functions. Maybe it sounds a bit strange when I'm talking about it, why I'm actually underlining this, but it's very uh, particular uh, kind of a challenge in a, in a city of Mostar in a regular, as I said, in the regular programs. And that is why I'm underlining how important it is that we are opening up uh, and giving the chance to, to, to the children to understand and to try to love uh, uh, to love the, the, their city uh, the, the way they, they should uh, so uh, also introducing them uh, them to planning a process uh, to a mapping process uh, uh, trying uh, to communicate uh, the space and the activities and uh, for what they actually in regularly everyday life can use this spaces and giving uh, the chance uh, to give their uh, ideas and to be creative. So through this uh, open city, most are we were again engaging like a different sites. One of these sites is also partisan, uh, partisan playground, not partisan memorial, partisan playground, partisan igraliste. Uh, Veliki Park or the main, main uh, city park uh, and the um, pedestrian alley, uh, different ages uh, and different concepts. And one of the concepts that we actually all enjoyed in uh, was to remember uh, from our childhood or also the, the older part of the uh, team, uh, what were the games that we played when we were children and one of the games that we all agreed was really interesting uh, and um, quite uh, um, mediated although it's a uh, it's, a, it's also a very often a, a field of angriness, is a ludo, or in Bosnian language, so we uh, centimeters into a big um, playground at the partisan playground. So uh, we were uh, very active, children were very active, so they made it. They made it and then later they played alive. So what they actually produce is still at the partisan playground and it's uh, open to the children of a neighborhood or the kids of the whole city to come and to play. And it's really a real fun and it's uh, really nice the way how they build the communication between them. And it's a quite simple way uh, to do that. Uh, finally, yeah, um, yeah. Th this is a, a greetings uh, from uh, from the tournament uh, that was uh, a ludo tournament at the partisan playground, and then uh, uh, at the end of the open city, uh, we had an exhibition at the main pedestrian uh, uh, alley of Lenovo Shetelište or uh, Shetelište Nikola Šubića Zrinskog 
where children uh, had a chance uh, to present uh, their uh, work and uh, to present it to wider um, uh, audience. And uh, there were many uh, visitors and many um, just the citizens who were walking uh, around and uh, st stopping by uh, to see what it is uh, all about uh, and what uh, what the children actually are doing uh, and uh, they were quite curious and also there was some kind of interaction some uh, talks about some of the particular areas uh, that were mapped uh, on this map uh, and uh, one of uh, the part of, uh, of our work was also so within uh, this, uh, I don't know, number of uh, spaces uh, that we uh, somehow understood uh, could be uh, of a great potential for some uh, further activities, uh, uh, the group uh, who was very active uh, actually produced a kind of a, uh, open gallery that uh, could be part of the future the uh, open spaces of a city of Mostars. They are all uh, a gallery, an art gallery under the open uh, sky uh, at the city of Mostars that actually has so many sunny days. Uh, there was also the ideas that this could be a mobile uh, uh, gallery that could then uh, uh, go around uh, in different uh, corners of, of a city, et cetera, et cetera. In this very moment, uh, we are working on the project that is called uh, Mostarski Chile or Mostar Carpet. And uh, uh, we are uh, apart from um, working a spatial context uh, of uh, this um, of city of Mostar, uh, now we are assembling the narratives. Uh, we actually uh, built the, we have a questionnaire that is uh, at the Facebook page uh, of um, Urban House Idea. Uh, particularly, it would be for people from Mostar who live today in Mostar, but also those who live uh, in diaspora because we would like uh, to know the stories uh, like uh, from, uh, the, from the past, uh, from their maybe childhood or from their teenage years or youth, or uh, I don't know, some particular moments of their lives related to the 12 locations that uh, for the beginning of this project we selected. What we really want uh, to do through this project is actually to show the continuum of a space and uh, also to give the chance to younger people to understand uh, the real value of a space uh, and this uh, what uh, space is, uh, that the space and the city of Mostar is more than just uh, the plants and the buildings, it's a narrative its emotions uh, and it is part of someone's life. And then this uh, image that they can see today, uh, also unfortunately invisible borders that still exist uh, that were not part of the history of this city. And uh, hopefully uh, this uh, project, uh, we are just starting with the, uh, with the workshop, uh, Mostarski Chilima, but uh, we really hope that we will be able very soon uh, to finish it, uh, to, to make it quite bigger. And uh, apart from these uh, 12 locations that we will be able to somehow widen it out uh, in a wider area of a city of Mostar. So I think uh, maybe I ran fast, but uh, this is uh, the, and of uh, what I selected to, to present, uh, uh, I tried really to, to squeeze it uh, into some kind of a story that uh, is uh, built uh, uh, from also my personal experiences, but also from the point of uh, the facts, uh, historical facts of the post-war Mostar and uh, what we as Urban House Idea and the way how we fight against uh, the, the borders. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sanada, for this amazing presentation. And thank you so much for sharing your work um, with us. Um, your first time at Kuma, but I'm sure that this is not going to be the, the last. This is going to be a really great um, collaboration. Um, I was not aware of all the workshops and all the participatory work that you were uh, doing. It's something very, sorry, my neighbors are renovating at 7.50 p.m. Um, so in the meantime, I'm just gonna open up the floor. I'm so sorry. 
I'm just going to open up the floor to the audience and ask if there are any questions. Oh, yes, uh, Veronique has a question. Anisha also has a question, but maybe we can start with um, uh, Veronique's question. That's OK. Um, she says, hi, I'm Veronique from Canada. Oh, wait. Sorry, sorry. Um, sorry, um, Veronique just had a comment. Um, Eileen has a question and Misha has a question and I see also Susie has a question. Okay. So maybe we can start with Misha. Sorry, Misha, we can start with Misha and then we can move on to Eileen and then Susie. Yes, Senata, very, very, um, I'm very pleased and also impressed by the, in let's say, intriguing factor of how you manage to operate in the public space in particular. I'm sure that is just a glimpse of all the activities you are doing right now in Mostar. I was just writing to uh, Claudia that uh, I, I've, I've been to Trebinje and then the director of the university, um, of the university gallery, Marin, uh, visited me um, in Trebinje and he invited me to come to Mostar. So I hope that there will be a chance to meet you in person. I will be only a very short time in February in uh, Sarajevo, but this is another story. But just going back to, to the idea and then um, I'll also ask you uh, the following. How do you, um, how do you start the initiative? I mean, are you triggering in, in particular, like let's say a special group like children or a, a special group of children and then maybe children of a special school or neighborhood? This is question number one, very simple maybe. And the second one, how do you, think about funding would you say funding is a dis destruction of this kind of fragile community creating relationship or are you try to target into different zones for european money or three national fundings or whatsoever i'm happy to hear your your ideas on that thank you thank you thank you for uh, your questions uh, first of all uh, yeah we were exploring the ways uh, how to uh, organize the, the programs and who to invite how to actually invite because there were different experiences like uh, for some programs uh, we were uh, inviting uh, schools to delegate uh, students like primary schools but then this process is uh, quite uh, difficult because uh, it goes through full administration not only of a school but uh, the ministry for culture and education etc very often this kind of programs are not so i cannot say not so welcome but you know it's a quite long run to get to the point and uh, what we actually start doing is that we are mostly organizing our programs in uh, on weekends or afternoons and then uh, we have to get a permit from the parents we are uh, usually opening uh, we always have an open calls uh, through our facebook page but we also, since uh, our tradition in uh, Mostar and in Bosnia is uh, like uh, from year to year uh, messages, like uh, the parents who were first in our programs, uh, uh, who are happy with uh, what their children experience, uh, are then uh, transferring this uh, to others. And this is how the number is augmenting. So this is one, one way I would say how we are uh, getting the children with the youth, it's a bit different because not so many of them are interested there is particular phase like from 15 to like 18 or so they're very difficult to be animated and then after when they are already students then it's a totally different than there are uh, these uh, youth uh, who are in, interested in the topic and they are gladly coming for our programs. Uh, speaking about the funding, uh, I have to say that uh, we are quite often uh, volunteering some of the activities. Uh, we are trying to find the sponsors. We apply uh, to funding uh, to uh, local ministries uh, for education, culture, etc. But uh, uh, we also try with the foreign uh, programs, open calls on some uh, international uh, funds. Uh, for instance, uh, at this very moment, and we are waiting for an answer for one application we do with this Far Fabric and because we continue um, our collaboration with Far Fabric and still 
But I have to say, since we are quite uh, young, uh, like uh, not uh, yet two full years, uh, we don't have that much of the projects, uh, but they are very active. You know, once they are happening, they are quite full of activities and uh, somehow not really uh, big costs. And uh, we manage, I mean, we still are managing uh, the, the, all this uh, to happen, but uh, hopefully in a, in a near future, it will be easier. Thank you, Misha, for the question and smile answering. Eileen, did you have a question? Uh, yes, I do. Can you hear me? Because I, yeah. Okay. Hi, Senada. Hi. <laughs> it's always very nice to listen to you. Thank you for the for the lecture. Um, it's remarkable because it's not the first time I listen to you, <laughs> and I always, always, always listen, learn something new about Mostar. Um, I have a question for you because. During the course of my research on, on Mostar, when I talked with the people, whether they were born in Mostar or not, um, but, you know, like people who are living there, actually, um, very often when we talk about Mostar, people are telling me like Ovo Niegrad or Ovo Vyshe Niegrad. So for the non-Bosnian speakers, it, people say like, it, it's, not, it's not a city or it's not a city anymore. And it's really almost systematic. It really comes um, very quick in the, in, in the conversation. So I always try to ask them like, okay, but if it's not a city, then what is it? And there's the, there, nobody seems to have a word or, you know, like a word or a couple of words to qualify Mostar. But also I check with them what is their definition of the city? And they're very able to tell me, to give me a, 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 a clear, def their clear definition of what uh, a city is. So I would like to know how you reflect on that. Is that a sentence that you um, hear a lot? How maybe is your, or is your own um, um, opinion about that? Like, um, and if then it's not a city, then what, 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 what would it be? <laughs> thank you. And thank you again for the lecture. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, uh, Eileen. I really hope we will meet soon in Mostar again. Yeah. Uh, this is, uh, uh, I have to say this, what you just raised, uh, on the platform is, uh, for, for a new lecture. <laughs> Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, very often, very often uh, we hear this uh, uh, Bosnian, old Bosnian, or Turcism, uh, Kasaba. It's not anymore a city, it's Kasaba. Uh, yeah, for the fact uh, that uh, mm, the way I see that, no, that definitely it's, a, it's a true that uh, uh, speaking about the identity of a city, or the city I was raised in that I still have in my memory uh, and imagine then what had happened to older generation of people who can remember even better, or maybe who uh, frozen the image of that Mostard are the one who left the country, uh, who live today in diaspora, because this image they have is uh, not under the pressure of every day washing out the, the image and the face of a city of Mostar. The brutality of herbicide that had happened after the war with, all, with a lot of new construction and uh, the way of uh, the, how the urban planning is uh, behaving toward the city development is really brutal. And that is why people are unsatisfied because uh, the image of a city have changed completely. And uh, for, this is uh, for more than 20 years. I am uh, sorry to say that I also ident identified myself with this sentence very often that uh, I cannot recognize it. But it is the question what we are actually trying to recognize because like if you would you would ask my children the what they see is the city from my perspective it's an it's a totally different but from their perspective it's 
it, it is how it, it should be. But of course that I'm not uh, uh, agree with, uh, but unfortunately I'm so afraid uh, that we are not really able to bring back this, uh, what we are talking about, this, uh, this old image of a city of Mostar is almost impossible. I, I'm just asking myself if the process of reconstruction uh, started uh, globally on, uh, on the level of a whole city straight after the war, maybe we would um, save some, some elements, something. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. And you know, or maybe some people don't because they didn't see city of Mostar, but they are part of a city who are still in ruins. And it's a big question after 25 years, what really can be done with these ruins? Are they going to be dismantled? And then uh, we will very, uh, very soon see a totally uh, new constructions and concepts that will continue this line of washing out the primary uh, identity of a city and change it with something which will be, I don't know, a new identity, new urban identity of city. This is a big question. I don't have an answer on it because I don't see anyone in political structure who is actually engaged and thinking about what is uh, the process and what is actually the strategy for, for I don't know, next 10, 10 uh, years or so. So uh, uh, if I can uh, just uh, to, to wrap up, uh, on one hand, I totally understand the people saying that. I know that it's emotional effect of when they are saying this is not anymore uh, the city I identify with. Uh, but also just uh, to take this uh, in consideration, there are many people who migrated uh, from a wide area of Herzegovina region during the war, who came to the city of Mostar, who are today's uh, citizens of city of Mostar. They do not identify with the image of a pre-war Mostar. The only image they know is the image of today. So it's a quite hectic, you know, this... Uh, uh, I, I, uh, you will never find uh, uh, almost uh, 10 people with the same answer of today's Mostar. Yeah, what, what I would find very, if I can just add something like very shortly to leave the time for others, but what I would, what I find remarkable is that we always talk about the division of Mostar and uh, mainly ethnic division, et cetera, et cetera. But for me, the biggest division is very, it's not the biggest division, but the major division of the city is between the born Rogeni, the Mostarian born people and the people who arrived uh, during the war and why there is no dialogue between those two groups that could actually define what could be a future Mostar uh, instead of trying to go back to a former city that you know is impossible, but they still have to live together in the same city in the future. So well, this, yeah, is, that's, that's, this is one topic, really uh, uh, great topic. I mean, that should be, uh, uh, we, we should put more uh, effort and more time in this research. Uh, on the only thing really shortly, maybe also that the, at the beginning, because we are that kind of society and community, we do not really gladly uh, accept uh, someone who is coming, you know, and unfortunately, this is kind of uh, uh, also um, uh, what you call, uh, um, I forgot, uh, sorry, I, I, I just, uh, it ran out of my mind, but uh, uh, what I want to fun. say, if we, if we could discrimination, it's a kind of a discrimination, and I'm so well, very well aware that uh, how we discriminate in that sense, but uh, if uh, uh, if uh, this, the people who migrated uh, from uh, around the Mostar to Mostar uh, felt themselves as a locals, not as a natives, but locals, I think this is the most important. Because if I would go to New York today, of course, that I'm uh, bringing a part of my tradition, but I'm on purposely going there and I want to, to live in that city and I want to be part of that city. And you know, like this kind of dialogue that you are mentioning, I think never was built. On the one hand, because those uh, who were receivers didn't receive them in a proper way, while those who came, the comers, never actually uh, 
had the start starting point understanding okay i came to mostar and i want to be part of this in order to be part of this i need to to accept some of the local habits etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm -hmm. okay thank you eileen for the question and thank you sonata for the answer if you can please just ask Susie also has a question so please uh, i'm so glad to see you ask Susie. Please go ahead. Thanks so much. And thanks so much for your excellent talk. It's really lovely to learn a bit more about your remarkable community engaged work. Uh, along with what you were just saying, and also this idea of culture as a kind of tool for bridging diversity, I was thinking about sculptor uh, Ivan Filovich's statue of Mo uh, Bruce Lee in Mostar, uh, which, from what I understand, is this kind of making a statement that the younger generation can be united not only by local cultures and traditions, but say, Western pop culture in our era of globalization. So I wondered your thoughts on this. How is globalization shaping local connections and how is it showing up in the spaces of the city? Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think that one of really great examples uh, of uh, this uh, global scene uh, presented in Mostar on the one hand is uh, uh, United World College because these uh, children who are coming from around the world, studying in Mostad, uh, in gymnasium, that is unfortunately uh, described as a sc one school, the three, two schools under one roof, meaning that two school programs are actually sharing the same building. Then we have this United World College where everyone is the same and that they are bringing their traditions and the local children really want to be part of this. So it's a small pixel of example how a living tradition, a living global tradition, actually on this great example is showing that everything is possible. We just need to give a chance for this change. And uh, it seems very often that the, politi the political situation, although it sounds really uh may be bad but political situation is always somehow finding the way how to stop this natural process of being part of a global family and this is why also the uh, as a symbol uh i think you mentioned bruce lee uh, the the statue of bruce lee that uh, many gen people from my generation, I have to say, identify with Bruce Lee, the fighter for freedom, for you know, rights, la la la. And uh, it was very popular in the 80s. The two guys who actually invented this idea to put Bruce Lee in a city of Mostar, <laughs> uh, in some symbolical way, wanted to, to show that uh, this idea of uh, fighting for the rights, which is a global, natural, uh, think uh, to all of us, no matter of our skin color or ethnical background or anything, is actually in that, in, in the statue of Bruce Lee. That is why uh, younger people who want to get off this story of this burden, of the burden, because uh, they were not born and they already have a burden of division. They don't want to be divided. This is why I'm working in this uh, process uh, of uh, letting them having the space where they can be free. Because otherwise, it, it, because they are uh, together, another project that is super good, and it's really uh, giving a, a great platform for the children and the youth of most that is uh, a rock school in, uh, in, uh, in the Pavarotti Center. It's a great story that really ra raised uh, the, any kind of uh, you know, belonging uh, to anything except of music. This is more or less uh, what, uh, what this uh, uh, global understanding uh, has a small door in a, in a city of Mostar. It's very, I, I would say, progressive. You know, like in that uh, uh, small scale, you can see that it can work. It just has to be augmented like uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a wider range uh, among more young, young people. But in order to, for that to happen, we need to develop a dialogue. We need to give them a chance to talk, uh, to meet each other. And, uh, and that is probably a long way uh, to come to that point, but we need to be stubborn and uh, to give them this chance. Thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you, Susie. Susie is going to be our last speaker, actually, for the 
of Picture Month. Uh, so she will be giving us a talk on October 28th. Uh, so for those of you who are here, I hope thank you. Then as well. Thanks, Susie. We have one more question from Janana Had. Mm -hmm. Janana, if you can please um, ask your question. Hi. Hello. <laughs> my name is actually Sanya Lasic. Uh, I'm using um, my friend's computer. We are both <laughs> listening to your talk. We are sitting in Vienna. And um, so Janana is actually from Mostar. And uh, I was born in Sarajevo. And when the war started, I was five. So I lived most of my life outside of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And my question is actually related to something that you've already talked about, which is this element of diaspora pe people. And my question to you is how do you, as, as, as an architect and someone who is dealing with, with these topics of like uh, also urbanistic uh, changing of the city, et cetera, et cetera, see the question of diaspora because um, uh, like people who are constantly coming back to, to these cities, not just Mostar, but to all the cities and little villages of Bosnia and Herzegovina, but also the entire territory of ex Yugoslavia, they are reshaping and changing the, the landscape of the city. And here is also, I think I would include the, the financial means and the European money that they've earned somewhere else. And I think it also um, plays, at least for me, because this is my experience, it plays a huge part in this, uh, how, how, how you actually see all of these cities. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I will just uh, then, uh, um speak about uh, you know like this uh, communication uh, most of diaspora uh, on probably two uh, levels one uh, where you have this uh, uh, always uh, this um, emotional moment uh, where diaspora when you talk to people coming uh, from diaspora to mostar and i have so many friends uh, the matter of fact is that all, almost all my generation live in uh, somewhere else because uh, we were at that age that uh, most of parents wanted uh, children to leave to to save themselves and most of them stayed somewhere so when we talk when they come on summers and when we have really relaxing time then then uh, we talk about the memories uh, the memories that we uh, built on certain places in the city of Mostar that uh, many of them changed the face to completely. Uh, some of them because they are destroyed the, in the war, some of them because the post-war reconstructions completely deformed the, the area. Some of them neglected, such as Partisan Memorial, because we have such a great memories to Partisan Memorial, but unfortunately, you know how it looks. But on the other hand, for instance, this what you are saying about also investments, uh, the fina finances, etc. In most areas, it's so dominant lately, uh, since it's also a touristical uh, uh, city. Uh, uh, the um, outskirts of a city are getting overwhelmed with uh, kind of uh, renting villas uh, for for business. Maybe sometime for you know come for summer holidays but very often for uh, actually making extra uh, money or buying uh, the housing or some apartments in order to rent them again uh, for an extra uh, finan uh, finance, uh, financial uh, goods. So in that sense, you have a feeling that uh, uh, as much as they are kind of uh, emotionally related to city of Mostar, the time went, you know, like there is uh, three decades after, and uh, they try maybe to be pragmatic. But I'm just talking about one small number of people. I'm not really talking about big investments because up to now in city of Mostar, not that much of big investments by uh, diaspora. Maybe very soon, as I heard for some uh, big projects uh, that uh, could be invested by diaspora. But this is, you know, like between the between it. It is kind of a, on one hand uh, still. Uh, a very pure, clear image about the city that they keep in their mind and in their heart. And they are so uh, in a kind of a 
sorry and in a pity because uh, this image is almost erased. But on the other hand, they live uh, in, in a context of today, investing into something that is actually part of this uh, image changing. But it's not really easy to conclude that, you know, mm -hmm. what, is, what is right and what is wrong. You know, I think um, it is just part of the life. Yeah, um, if I can just add a little bit, uh, another thing to it. Um, I'm a visual artist and performer and I, and I work also with music and Sevdach. And um, my topics are based and, and it's a research on identity, on identity that I'm not really sure if it's mine anymore because I grew up in other countries. So I deal a lot, a lot with nostalgia also from my from the generation of my parents and generation of my grandparents. And for example, also my friend who is a little bit older than me for her, this experience is again on a different level, yeah? And, and so I, I don't go often to Bosnia and Herzegovina and I'm mostly in the Northern part of, of Bosnia, especially Banja Luka, so Republika Srpska, and you have another layer of this po po politicized uh, situation. And in the last 30 years, of course, I'm seeing this Banja Luka, for example, changing drastically. Yeah? And, and uh, in, at the same time, there is always this voice of my parents, but this was different uh, back days and this is not the same anymore. So um, yeah, I think it's also this fight, I would say of, of my generation of like trying to understand what something should be and what something should look like. And I think there is very little room to leave to people, the ones who actually live there in these cities and to, to the ones like me who are outside, who we are connected through these identities and stuff, um, to actually have the possibility to say, okay, I will create something that is meaningful now. And, and, to, and not go constantly in the back, in the past, I mean, of course, and I really say this with a lot of uh, passion, I think it's very important to know all the historical facts from all sides of, of people who were fighting the, the wars, uh, the war in Bosnia and Herzegovina, especially, but at the same time, um, how do you, how do you give the space to say, okay, but now I, I live it, I live this moment, not mm -hmm and not the moment of my parents and not the moment of ex Yugoslavia, but knowing all the historical facts. Yeah, and, and also thank you so much for, the, for all your answers and everything you've said. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much for the question. Maybe for the end, if I may ask uh, Jimana, I'm wondering what, what is the connection um, between Mostar, the cultural scene and all the work that you're doing and, and maybe the rest of the country. And it seems like the Association of Architects of Bosnia and Herzegovina is based in Sarajevo and a lot of the local NGOs and a lot of the, let's say, local support, um, as far as I know, as it has been kind of gravitating towards um, Sarajevo. And I'm just wondering if you can comment on that kind of, is there an interconnectivity between the two cities or maybe even other cities um, of Bosnia, like Bihać or Banja Luka, or um, when we're talking about borders, um, I cannot help but think about uh, the connections or maybe disconnections between um, uh, Mostar and some of the other uh, cities around the country, both mm -hmm. architectural in, sense, in terms of the architectural scene, um, uh, but also maybe architectural uh, dialogue, dialogue and, and um, collaboration. What's your experience on that? Uh, uh, unfortunately, I have to say it's quite poor because, uh, yeah, Association of Architects uh, based in Sarajevo, of course, has a members. I'm also a member of it, uh, uh, in, uh, but uh, I was uh, once uh, proposing that it would be probably good if uh, this central uh, uh, part of uh, Associatia standing in Sarajevo still has some kind of satellite around like a smaller dependence or some departments uh, in uh, Mostar that will cover uh, 
so southern part of uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and then maybe Bihać uh, uh, or Banja Luka. Uh, I, uh, IDEA has uh, some contacts uh, with, uh, through some projects, actually even more during ADA, uh, to Asociatia, with association, of, uh, because uh, uh, we had uh, organized this uh, Mostarski Dani Orisa, um, uh, Days of Oris in Mostar, uh, it was in our organization, but we did collaborate with the association then. Uh, we had uh, an idea, like uh, parallelly to this uh, um, community engage, uh, engaging projects uh, like this one at Partizan Uigralist, sorry, to make, to develop uh, a festival uh, uh, for architecture and design called FAD. And we started actually the whole process uh, just a bit before uh, uh, pandemic started. And this is what has stopped us. So this is the level where we can maybe communicate more with the Association of Architects of Bosnia and Herzegovina. But uh, in a certain way, uh, for some very small activities, we had a communication to uh, Center uh, Islaživački Center IC Prostor in Banja Luka. And uh, probably in the near future, we will develop some uh, project. Uh, what I see also as a kind of a disadvantage or is the fact that, uh, as you mentioned, we have a lot of NGOs, not only in different cities, but in the same city, like in Mostar, you do have uh, NGOs that are active uh, quite a lot uh, in these spatial contexts, but also democracy, um, so sociology, etc. But uh, you do not see them exactly in uh, in one um, in one image. It's kind of defragmented. So what we tried actually to to start with, and I think in certain way we did succeed with Partizan of Igralista, uh, since uh, Idea is just one of the actors, one of the stakeholders in that process, together with the Street Art Festival, together with NGO Dignitet and some international uh, activists, that uh, we actually all put our together energy helping uh, this area to erase, to awake, so that we are visible through this one project. Otherwise, when we are doing uh, uh, different projects on uh, different places, it's kind of losing this, uh, the, 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 it's a loss. You cannot really uh, clearly see it. So we are trying to make this uh, in uh, uh, Mostar. And then if we succeed with this concept to try to widen it uh, to other cities, I really hope that with some uh, uh, NGOs in Bosnia and Herzegovina, very soon we will uh, make a bit tighter uh, links. But um, uh, you know how it functions. Uh, uh, somehow it's a program oriented. Usually NGOs are pr project and program oriented and uh, in that sense, uh, it's very often very difficult to make uh, 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 stable uh, links, except of uh, uh, being active through the project. Usually, at least this is my experience. Fair enough. Okay, thank you. Well, you have Kuma here from thank all, you. at disposal. Also. Thank you very much. So I'm sure we'll find a way of uh, collaborating. So before we wrap up, there are a few comments. Um, just uh, Michelle says, thank you all for making this available and all the work put into sharing this knowledge and ideas. And then Claudia also says, thank you so much everyone for joining Sonata's talk. It's a pleasure to see uh, people from different countries attending our architecture month. Um, and um, Misha says, amazing community-based projects. Congratulations to Sonata. And um, I think that's it. Otherwise, people were just kind of introducing themselves. And so there's still a few minutes if you would like to type in your name and where you're from, that would be very helpful. And so this kind of wraps up um, Sonata's uh, talk. We are going to be back on Thursday uh, with Anwar uh, Jaber. She'll be talking about uh, Ramallah. And so same time, same place. Um, and I, know maybe, I, I really want to thank Sanada for this amazing talk. 
Um, it was a real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. And also thank you all for being with us. We had another great turnout tonight. So um, I see Claudia is with us. Uh, maybe she also wants to say um, a few words. Oh, and just before I go, Su uh, Susie says, thanks for another fantastic home lecture. It was wonderful to learn more about Mostar and Sinada's local work. Thank you, Susie, thank you. for being with us. I also would like to thank Sanada. It was a really wonderful talk, uh, really inspiring and emotional at some point. It really, really great talk. Thank you so much again for accepting our invitation. And again, thank you for this amazing group of people following the talk tonight. And we had a great audience from the beginning of the architecture month with Haris and Nadia. And uh, I'm really grateful to all of you for finding the time to connect over Zoom. And the, the hope is always that we will uh, meet one day um, soon in, in Bosnia, hopefully, yeah, in hopefully. Canada, or, in, or in Mostar. But thank you so much. We're very grateful and uh, hopefully see you again on, on Thursday. Yes. And, um, thank you very much, Sinan. Thank you. thank you for inviting me and thank you for sharing this great uh, words. And uh, of course, welcome to Mostar. Yes, we'll come and see you in Mostar for sure, for sure. Thanks everyone, see you on Thursday. Thank good you night. very much good. everyone, have a good, uh, good rest of your day. Bye bye, thank you. And thank you Leila, of course. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you so much, have a good evening. Okay, bye bye everyone, thank you.